Yeah, yeah, we go. Okay, so 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 here's what I recommend. Let's do approximately what we think is 25, 50, 75, and 100. That's and then record the numbers down. Yeah. And then we'll just bring them to those numbers each time. What's our starting airspeed? Eight or twelve? Eight. 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 We're gonna do the same thing we did on Friday. Yeah. Two twenty-two meters per second. Yeah. So uh, over the next couple of days, we're really focusing on two separate elements of the aircraft that we're looking to verify. We're going to be doing some environmental flight testing, and that will allow us to do a complete system test of the aircraft in flight in the extreme environments, or the environments at the extremes of its design specification. And that allows us to test to make sure the entire aircraft as a whole functions as it should at those boundaries. Oh, perfect. Yes, yeah, so I'm just, just, it's linear. We're putting all of this together in what we call our, our free flight tests, where we tether the aircraft and then we fly the aircraft in the free stream. And you know, th this is the first for this facility. It's definitely a first for, uh, for Precision Hawk. We're absolutely thrilled to be doing it. And, and it's, it's a very difficult test, but it's one that really tests all of the systems in concert. To be able to fly a plane at cruise speed in a wind tunnel like this, but not just at ambient temperature, but we do it at a minus 10, and then we do it at a plus 40 and then we put snow on it and then we put rain on it. So I mean, we're actually testing this aircraft, flying in the same way we fly outside, but in a controlled environment. Test programs like this are absolutely critical to how our engineering team operates. We start by defining uh, certain environments that we need to be able to operate in, certain things that the aircraft must do in order for it to be useful for our client base. And so doing tests like this, take that aircraft and put it right in the environment that we want to operate. The inside of the aircraft is dry. I mean, we can see that, that it's wet, we've opened it up, we've taken a, a, we're not swabbing the entire aircraft, but we can't see any water droplets on the inside of the aircraft, meaning that the propeller has largely protected all of the openings on the aircraft, preventing any kind of water ingress from getting on the electronics and causing any kind of damage, which is a really good indication that this aircraft can fly in a light drizzle. Yeah, it's excellent. It's excellent. The environments that are applicable for agriculture, applicable for oil and gas, applicable for insurance, mining. Um, and it's, it's critical to us that we test in those environments because those are the environments that, that it's actually being used. You know, we can sit down in our offices with pencils and papers and calculate until the cows come home. But ultimately, when we take our aircraft and we put it in a situation like this, we understand firsthand what's going to go wrong. You know, in a cold day like today, we're doing cold testing today to mimic some of the work that we do in oil and gas and insurance. Um, it, we may see a servo freeze or we may see control surfaces with problems. These are the kinds of things that we can predict ahead of time, but we don't know for sure until we actually do the testing in an environment like this. So the next set of tests that we'll be doing won't be done in the wind tunnel per se, they'll be done in the multi-axis shaker table. And in that case, we'll be mimicking landing forces and the forces, uh, the aerodynamic forces on the aircraft while it's in flight. Now this is important for us because we need to be able to tell our service teams and our clients in the field how long they should expect the wings to last, how long they should expect the fuselage to last, how many landings they can do before they need to get this aircraft serviced. Uh, it's, it's incredibly important for safety and it's also obviously very important for the clients to get the data that they need. Okay, we're, we're doing like 90% of what the table can do, right? I know, so this, I... Is a, this, is, this is way more than what, uh, than what we're gonna see in flight. This is, this is gonna be really good. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be excellent. I think this is gonna be, yeah. 
possibly even more valuable than the arrow testing. I think we're gonna look, go back and look and see cracked seams. I think we'll see solder. I don't think we're gonna fly solder. No, no, but we'll yeah, fly. I, I mean, think, I think we're gonna crack the solder. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna crack the solder, and we might lose some to debris. We're gonna be doing certain shakes that will mimic what uh, what kind of aerodynamic forces the rudder will see in flight. We'll then we'll do a bunch of other shock tests where it mimics landing over and over and over again. We will literally do hundreds and thousands of landings, and then we're gonna take the aircraft apart and we're gonna see, understand where it was stressing, where it was fatiguing, and when the engineers will go back, they'll iterate on that, and when we're done, we'll have a, a piece of equipment that is truly robust and truly reliable for our clients. Nice! Oh, man, that is perfect! It's gonna be like, who's beating a drum? <laughs> I know! Who's playing music right now? I'm busy testing. I can honestly say this is an engineer's dream. Um, so some of the most difficult parts of engineering systems like this are is trying to recreate the environment that we're operating within. Um, you know, we can do lots of calculations, we can design materials with certain material properties, but ultimately it all has to come together into one product that just has to perform. And so all under one roof here, we have the ability to fly our aircraft at our cruise speed. We can fly at both in a static situation, and you can also fly it in the free stream. Just behind us, we can go to uh, a, a multi-axis load table where we can now impart um, aerodynamic loads and landing loads on the aircraft. Uh, and we can do all of this at temperatures ranging well beyond our operational ranges of you know, minus 10 degrees Celsius up to plus 40. We can go beyond that. We can truly, truly stress this aircraft to the max. And, and, and I can say that even since we've been here, we have found small changes that we need to do to this aircraft that have already saved our company tens of thousands of dollars, um, just in the data that we've collected to this point already.